G'day, I'm Anthony Burns from Harcourt in Victoria and this is my 84 Falcon Farm Ute. came to me. It found me rather than me actually finding it. So I own a wrecking yard and the car was in, still in daily use uh, to a guy in Bendigo and he called us to get rid of it basically. He just wanted to dispose of it. He wanted someone to come and take it away. So and we just wanted to try and fit a motor in and make it go as fast as we could, as cheap as we could basically. Yeah, that, that became the plan after the, the plan of the cool old daily driver failed with it. It's a, a, a 2010 naturally aspirated um, territory engine in that car, so it's, you know, we're leaning on everything, you know, it's as cheap as it could be really. I've spent good money on a fuel system and on a turbo and I've spent the money where it's important, but owning a wrecking yard I have quite a stock of, of barras and I'm happy to change valve springs and, uh, and head studs and oil pump gears if I have to to the next one. I mean if it melts, it melts. Having had a sleeper in the past that was quite loud, I knew that uh, it's probably important not to give that away as much, so decided to go with a barra. Um, barra's nice and quiet, makes the same sort of, you know, honestly crap noise <laughs> that the 250 makes. So it's not quite as big a giveaway as what's going on, so you can sort of drive it around and um, it, it's still reasonably incognito. So I built an XD wagon with an LS engine in it a few years ago and I've done drag challenge with that a couple of times. I think a lot of people, probably especially Ford guys, would think of me as being an LS guy rather than being a Ford guy. And I have had three other FG turbos previous to playing around with this ute, so I'm well aware of what they can do and how fast they can be and how reliable and smooth they are and all that sort of stuff. So it wasn't... Um, it's not anything to do with having to wanting to beat the wagon or anything else. It was I've had them. I've, I've beaten the wagon with other cars. You know, it's not. Um, it was more just going doing a different car. You know, building a new thing. I, I like having a Ford powered Ford. Yeah. So putting the battery in was pretty easy. Um, in it's easy to say an engine swap is easy. There's always a lot of little details that catch you, but there's nothing in that car that wouldn't be achievable by a guy at home in his garage. Most of the parts in the car are still Ford parts. You know, like we're we're using standard um, X-series engine mounts, uh, or chassis plates, I should say. We're using E-series engine mounts, uh, still running a standard four tail shaft. It's a, a 345 LSD out of an XG ute, which bolts straight in. Um, so we've retained as much Ford into it as we could to make it cheap. Uh, BTR automatic, which is a controversial choice in a gearbox in a XR6 turbo sort of build, but I like having overdrive. Um, obviously, I like to do drag challenge. That's what this car is built for. I mean, it's not all about having it being as fast as it could be. We just wanted something that was fast and fun and not a million dollars because we don't have a million dollars to play with. <coughs> Uh, it's got a 98 and an E85 tune, still in process. I've literally just driven it from the dyno tuners to here. Uh, that was the first drive on E85. It's making 500 rear wheel horsepower on E85 at the moment. To be a turbo BTR built inside an AU column shift case, so as it will connect to my XG steering column, which is suits a four speed column, which is also able to be dressed in XE switch gear and plastics. So as when you look inside the car, it looks like it's got an XE steering column in it. So it's got XE lock and everything XE, but all using Ford factory parts. Like we had to drill two holes to make that work. Like it's, um, yeah, always with Fords, it seems to be, if you know what to mix and match, you can put a pretty reasonable sort of combination together with them. We've got an XE transducer in the gearbox to make the speedo read correct, but it interferes with the gear change on the BTR by giving it a false signal which only just worked out last night, so I haven't had a chance to actually change that back 
uh, we're going to have to put an AU transducer in to get the ECU to read the correct speed signal. We can do it with 400 horsepower and run an 11.30 with the station wagon. So it's, as I said, hey, extra 100 horsepower, it's got to be somewhere in the tent. Where? I don't know. But yeah, 10.99 would be good. <laughs> That'll do. Shouldn't get me kicked out. <laughs>